Hello. In this video, I'm going to go over the seven essential skills that every governance, risk, and compliance GRC professional needs to know when working in cybersecurity. Everyone talks about penetration testing and Linux and firewalls and the Security Operations Center and incident response, but the core skill set the, what tames this wild west is governance, risk, and compliance. If you're new to my channel, I'm Nicole, and I currently work in governance, risk, and compliance. And if you're interested in GRC, I do have a free training below that you can check out. And so let's get into the seven skills that you need as a cybersecurity professional working within GRC. The first one is understanding of regulations and also different types of frameworks. Regulations are things that the company has to follow follow or they can get fined millions of dollars. Now, frameworks are the things that help manage those risks. Some common regulations are things like PCIDSS, which is for the payment card industry, HIPAA, which is for the healthcare, GDPR, which is for Europe, FERPA, which is for people under 18. If you have an app and people under 18 utilize that app, you have to be in compliance with FERPA. There's FISMA and FedRAM for the federal government. And those are things that the agency has to comply with. So those jobs dealing with that are basically a mandated position. It's just negligent not to have those positions. Now, the other side of it is cybersecurity frameworks. These things are like NIST risk management framework used by really large companies, ISO 27001, which is most globally known and provides accreditation. So then you could be a supplier to other people and they know that they can trust you. There's NIST cybersecurity framework, and these are things that can help build a cybersecurity program and also help manage the risk that you have on your network. And cybersecurity is all about reducing the probability of impact due to a cyber event. And if you are wanting to go deeper into this topic, I do have a GRC crash course where I walk you through on how to build out one of these. Now, the second one that you must know is risk management and risk assessments. Not all security risks are equal, and that is something that a lot of people get wrong. They think all risks are are exactly the same and they should be treated the same and that is false it really depends on a lot of different factors knowing how to do a risk assessment and assess what the threats the vulnerabilities and the risk are really important you also need to understand risk assessments and i do have a video that goes way into risk assessments you can check it out on how you would do that based on nist 800-30 and then also how you mitigate these risks. So what controls or what measures are you going to put in place? Are you going to accept the risk? Are you going to transfer the risk and everything that comes with that? So really knowing what your risk tolerance is for the company and then understanding the risks you have and then dealing with them appropriately. Understanding that concept is key in governance, risk and compliance, but also really any job it'll help you talk to your manager a lot better because this is just how what they're thinking. And it'll also be able to let you ask for more funding because then you can show how this risk is related to the business. The next concept in governance, risk and compliance within cybersecurity that you need to know are security controls and control sets. These are security measures that can be put into place and are usually technical controls, administrative controls, and also physical controls and these protect the data users and systems and they can be preventative things like firewalls multi-factor authentication they can be detective so things like logging and a a sim s-i-e-m or sim however you want to say it they can be things like intrusion detection and security operation centers then you also have corrective types of controls that you can put into place and this is like incident response backups so if you do get hacked can you back up to a setting where that didn't exist? And then can you recover all of that data? And so some common things here are the most common one that I hear everyone cite is NIST 853. And that is only used for the federal government because it's so intense and it's mandated by FISMA, their compliance regulation. They have to use NIST 853. But for non-federal unclassified systems, you can use NIST 800-171. PCI DSS has its own control set. There's also HIPAA that has its own control set. So you can switch out control sets 
depending on what industry you're in. The next one is policy development and guidance. So in governance, risk, and compliance, you're going to be creating the policies that other people need to follow. So without it, it's going to be the Wild West, and then you can't really enforce anything because there's nothing to enforce. Some common policies are a disaster recovery plan. Say if you work in AWS, you'll have to figure out how AWS does their disaster recovery and what services they have and then create a policy around it. There are things like incident response plans. So what are you going to do in terms of incident response? What are you going to do in terms of change management and making changes and tracking changes and all of that sort? So you're the person developing these policies. Now in a governance risk and compliance job, you're not going to be doing all of these jobs, but knowing the basics of them is really important if you want to be somewhat adequate in your job. There's tons and tons of policies. The next one that you're going to need to know is compliance and auditing and monitoring. Compliance audits basically make sure that the company is doing what they're supposed to be doing. So they go auditing and compliance come in, they go through the control set that's applicable to that industry, whether it's HIPAA for healthcare, PCI DSS for payment card, 853 for FISMA, and so what they do is these auditors come in and then they have a checklist and you can find these checklists online and then they go through each control and then they verify that company is in compliance so then they can maintain their authorization to basically operate. So if the payment card industry isn't in compliance with PCI DSS, they can no longer process payments. That's not a good thing and they could get fined millions and millions of dollars, they lose reputation and then they don't really have a business and go bankrupt. That's a very real possibility if you don't maintain these rules and regulations. The next one, this is what happens business continuity planning and incident response. What happens when you have a breach? Knowing really you could just work in this section within GRC and have a job forever. How do you know that something is wrong? What steps do you take after an attack? Who do you contact? Do you have names and numbers of those people? Can the company keep running after the cyber attack? And how long do they have until they go out of business? This is really important to have a contingency plan on what exactly you're going to do. Don't overlook this. And it's a really important concept that every company should have a contingency plan in place. The next skill set that you're going to need to know working in cybersecurity as a GRC analyst is that you're going to need to know how to communicate to people at different types of levels. There are different ways to communicate to different types of people, and it depends on the audience you're talking to. So you're not going to talk to a technical person the same way that you're going to talk to senior management. And you're not going to talk to senior management the same as you would talk to the architect or an end user. I would say out of everything that I've ever talked about on this channel, this is the most important skill that you can have is being able to assess who you're talking to and then tailor your language so they know what you're talking about. This is really difficult to do. And something that I see a lot of people that are technical have a problem doing because they're so technical and they just want to explain the, the weeds of things, but they forget that management doesn't really care. They just care about the end result of what you're doing and how it's affecting the company. Those are the skills, in my mind, the most important skills within governance, risk, and compliance, and things that you should at least be familiar with. And if you're interested, I do have a totally free training that actually helps you start a governance, risk, and compliance career if you're looking to transition into this type of role. So check that out below and I'll see you in the next video.